Oh, my precious. You would never betray me. <laughs> it's actually salty. guys Josh here uncaged fighter so today we're going to talk about microplastics and Himalayan sea salt uh, I have a full write-up on this on my sub stack uh, it's a brand new sub stack it is free it's free to sign up so I encourage you to sign up for it it's gonna be more content coming down the line uh, a lot of good stuff I think you'll want to check it out um, go into a little more detail uh, than in this video on that but uh, let's go ahead and let's jump right into it so Back a little while back, I had recorded a video where I talked about the snake juice recipe, the snake juice recipe that I use. Um, and in that video, I kind of made a comment. I really didn't think it was going to be that controversial, um, but I ended up being very, very wrong. Uh, the comment I made was uh, instead of using the, the fancy pink Himalayan sea salt, the trendy shit, uh, that you could just use uh, regular run of the mill table salt that you probably already have in your pantry. Uh, again, I didn't think it was going to be a big deal. I didn't think anyone was going to care. Um, but I was wrong. Uh, quite a few people uh, uh, made some comments on the, on the YouTube video. They made some comments on my Facebook Messenger, and they made some comments uh, within, uh, they actually sent some to my email uh, about how I was wrong and how you absolutely had to use it absolutely had to use this stuff and I'm not against this stuff I'm not you know it's just it's more expensive and a lot of people don't already have it sitting around so it's an extra trip which if you're like a supreme procrastinator like me that's just another reason to put off trying the extended fasting I and mean, you guys know I'm a huge fan of extended fasting um so just not to hell with it there's no real benefit to have to using this over table salt so just use it uh, I mean, we use this stuff in the house, and my wife likes it because, and I quote, it's prettier. And it is prettier. I mean, it's, it's pretty stuff. Um, I think it tastes a little bit better, uh, you know, if you put it on something like steak or if you put, um, like, uh, like, buttered toast or something like that, sprinkle a little bit of salt on it, it's great. I mean, it's, it does, I think it does have a better taste profile. Um, so I'm not against it, um, but I just don't think it's, absolutely necessary and it's not i don't think it's better per se than regular table salt it's not healthier uh which was one of the arguments that people kept kind of tossing my way you have to use the himalayan sea salt it's healthier it's got trace minerals which is nonsense i'll go over that in another video um but today we're going to focus on uh, uh one of the other arguments and we'll look at some screenshots here uh that there are no microplastics in Himalayan sea salt. This guy who says it, uh, this person says it, and then we have user label 1877. He says, regular table salt is full of plastics and is only good for killing weeds, tossing in the trash. And so I respond to him saying, basically, look, bro, um, there's microplastics and Everything, there's, there's microplastics in pretty much every brand of salt uh, you're going to be able to buy. And so he sends me back kind of a snarky message. Can you explain how Himalayan sea salt is mine, which is mined from 500 million year old ancient seabeds deep in the earth, became contaminated with microplastics, which weren't invented into the 20th century? Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's comments like that that kind of made me realize that there's a lot of misinformation out there and that this video was, was necessary. So, uh, so let's, let's jump right into it. Uh, number one, first let's do a real quick, uh, uh, uh bird's eye view of what micro microplastics are. Uh, a microplastic is defined as something, 
it, it's going to be a plastic rather than just like the regular macro plastic, I guess. I don't really know if that's a term. I think they just call it plastic. But a microplastic is any uh, uh, bit of plastic pollution that is uh, smaller than a sesame seed. So that's kind of their cutoff. If it's bigger than a sesame seed, it's not a microplastic. If it's smaller than that, and I think there's actually, if it gets really small, there's like a designation for nanoplastics now. Um, but anything smaller than a sesame seed. And a lot, of the, a lot of these particles that you're consuming every day, and we're all consuming them every day. Uh, don't kid yourself there. We're all consuming them. Uh, they're gonna be much, much smaller than a sesame seed, almost in de, uh, like you can't really detect it. Sometimes they're fibers, sometimes there's little particles, um, but they're there, they're there. Um, water, our water system seems to be the biggest, uh, the biggest area in which they are uh, found, but you know, you'll also find them, uh, you know, in the ground, in the soil, there's microplastics in the soil, uh, there's microplastic pollution even in the air, especially indoors. So, you know, if you've got uh, like carpeting, uh, if you wear, uh, this is a cotton shirt, but it's a synthetic blend cotton shirt, right? This kind of stuff, the, the microplastics, little plastic fibers will kind of come off and then they'll fly in the air. If you've ever uh, looked at the sun kind of shining through and you'll see these little filaments and fibers and stuff, some of that is indeed uh, microplastics. So that's what microplastics are. Uh, let's talk about uh, this claim that there are no microplastics in Himalayan sea salt. And the argument kind of goes a little something like this. It goes kind of like what, it, it, and it really is almost exactly what uh, label 1877 says. It's, it's, you know, this isn't salt that's, that's mined from, that's brought up from the ocean where, you know, it kind of, you know, it kind of makes sense having microplastics and like, like actual sea salts, right? That stuff comes up from the sea. It's, it's, uh, the salts are, are basically gathered from actual seawater. So when that happens, because the oceans are actually polluted with microplastics, there's going to be microplastics in the sea salt. That makes sense. But Himalayan sea salt is different. It's, it's actually more correctly, correct to call it a rock salt. Uh, and it, it, it indeed is, underground has been underground for a very long time and in theory shouldn't have been exposed to any sort of microplastics and you know that is true while it's in the ground now once it's been mined uh, it's a different story and i'm sure you're probably asking well where's the proof okay so uh there's actually uh, this took me <laughs> to gather I, I just gathered three different studies here uh, it took me all of 20 minutes to find this. 20 minute Google search to find this. I don't know why any of the people commenting on my video uh, didn't do their own little 20 minute Google search to find these. Um, but yeah, there have been three, at least three, there may be more, uh, at least three uh, that have found the presence of microplastics. Now, um, you know, you might be able to go find more. I'm just lazy. Did a little, you know, 20, 30 minute Google search. Uh, so these three studies, and we'll get them up on the screen now. Uh, microplastic pollution in commercial salt, anthropogenic contamination of tap water, beer. <gasps> There's microplastics in beer. The sons of bitches. And sea salt. Uh, and the global pattern of microplastics in commercial grade food salts. All of these, all of these studies found microplastics in this trendy, coveted Himalayan sea salt. It's there. Um, you know, they found this stuff in the fancy, other fancy salts, uh, other rock salts out there as well. Uh, but we're just gonna focus on the Himalayan sea salt today. Um, and I kinda wanna point out this one, so I'm gonna pop up another pic real quick. Uh, you see the Himalayan sea salt here. If you look at kind of the levels of uh, plastic, microplastic pollution in here, it's not like there's um, really much less than other brands. In fact, some of the, some of the it actually out uh, has more mac, uh, uh, microplastics than some of these other brands. Um, so 
that was another thing. You know, when I go to talk to people about this, um, you know, they were, they, one of the arguments was, well, hey, why, if there are microplastics in it, then why don't we still use it? Because uh, it's not like it's coming from the ocean where it starts off with microplastics in it. Let's uh, uh, use it where, you know, maybe there's just a little bit of contamination. But that's, again, that's kind of a flimsy argument. Um, because, I mean, it's just, it's there. Um, and another thing you have to look for, uh, uh, and when you go to the Substack and you see uh, some of the links I provide uh, for these studies, uh, they don't always call it Himalayan sea salt, they'll call it Pakistani rock salt, because that's actually what it is, okay? Uh, it's not, <laughs> it's all this stuff is mined in Pakistan, pretty much. It's mined in Pakistan, uh, some of it's, ship there, shipped to other countries for packaging, uh, but it's all mined uh, pretty much in Pakistan. I think there might be a little bit of mining in northern India, but most of it is is in Pakistan where all this is coming from. So you'll see Pakistani rock salt instead of them saying Himalayan sea salt. Uh, some of them say it, some of them don't. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for this stuff. Um, we'll, I'll show you a pic here of that to see what that looks like. So, so you can see there's Himalayan sea salt, there's Pakistani rocks, all this is the exact same product, the exact same thing. And they both have microplastics in there. So yeah, so uh, there definitely is microplastic pollution in your Himalayan sea salt. So I'm sure you're probably wondering, well, how the hell did that happen? It's, it's been underground for millions of years. You know, what would cause this contamination? Um, and I think, if I were a betting man, uh, I would think it comes from how it is uh, transported and how it's packaged. Uh, so uh, another bit of research I found going through this found that there uh, that the two most prominent types of microplastic pollution came from two different plastic sources: uh, polypropylene and polyethylene plastic. Now, what's interesting about polypropylene and polyethylene? Let's start with poly, polypropylene. Blah, blah, blah. Um, polypropylene is um, its main use. Its main use is in what we call uh, plastic bulk bags. Okay, so if you're going to ship bulk goods, um, and I used to be uh, involved in the logistics industry. I was a forklift operator, so I worked with this kind of stuff all the time. I saw these these what are called plastic bulk bags coming through all the time. They'll hold, you know, they'll hold like one ton worth of stuff in some cases. I mean, we're talking uh, industrial grade, heavy duty uh, plastic bags. I'll show you a picture of these. Um, and so that that's a polypropylene bag, which these salts are popped into. Um, show you this gentleman right here. Uh, this is a this is a Pakistani salt miner. And behind him, you can see smaller uh, polypropylene bulk bags filled with Himalayan sea salt. Okay, so again, uh, I'll show you a couple more pictures here and here. Um, so my point is, right, one of the most prominent uh, uh, polluting plastics in Himalayan sea salt, in any sea salt really, is this polypropylene stuff. And if I were a betting man, I would say it's because they ship it in these polypropylene bags. I can tell you as someone who's worked with these things that, that those bags, while they are strong, they are not abrasion resistance. When, when, when uh, something abrasive comes in contact with them over and over again, these bags are reused. That's just a fact, they're reused. Uh, and you know, if they're sitting in there and they're going through transport, they're going from Pakistan to the United States and this stuff, right? They're, it's rubbing up against it, right? This stuff frays, okay? Because they're woven plastic fibers, right? This stuff will fray, okay? And that's, you're getting, so you'll get these particles intermixed into your sea salt. Uh, and I would imagine, uh, so this is kind of, you can see that. It's a little bit more coarse, this is coarse. Um, but then I uh, can use a shaker. I would imagine this coarse stuff, right, is probably a lot more abrasive than like the powdery stuff, but I'm not sure. 
Uh, you'd have to, someone above my pay grade would actually have to look into that and prove that. But I would imagine that the coarser it is, the more abrasive it becomes. Uh, so that's polypropylene. That's probably how the polypropylene is getting in there. If, if I were betting, that's how. That's what I would bet with. Polyethylene is the other of the two major plastics. We're talking 70% of all microplastics found in these sea salts uh, are, are polypropylene, polyethylene. Polyethylene uh, is very common. Uh, and I actually have some polyethylene right here. Oh. Grocery bags, okay? You get them in grocery bags. You get them in any sort of like plastic consumer packaging. Nine times out of 10, probably more often than that, <laughs> 10 times out of 10, uh, you're look, if it's plastic, it's gonna be polyethylene or some sort of polyethylene blend, okay? Uh, and again, uh, it's not abrasion resistant, okay? Uh, if, if it's sitting in a container like this, small amounts of it are probably coming off from the packaging. Um, so that's probably where you're getting the polyethylene from. Um, so, you know, that's, that's probably what we're looking at. So, uh, and I'll show you some pictures of some of these salt brands um, right here. Yeah. So all those are just polyethylene bags that they're sitting in. This, uh, what I have here, that's glass, right? This is a glass container. It's salty. I don't know why it's salty, um, but it's, it is glass. Uh, but this right here, and I don't know what specifically this plastic is, um, but if you look into it, it's plastic all the way around, okay? And you're grinding this. You're grinding this coarse salt with this. Um, we're definitely eating uh, uh, microplastics as well. So, you know, I'm not any better than you um, here. So, I mean, that's that. There, there's definitely microplastics in your Himalayan sea salt. Um, so and before I go, I'll address uh, what probably are gonna be some criticisms coming onto the channel. I'll try to get ahead of these. Um, I'm sure someone is gonna come up and say, well, my particular brand of Himalayan sea salt wasn't tested, so there's no microplastics in that. Their website says there's not any microplastics. Or this blogger who's a doctor says there's no microplastics in it. And that's an asinine argument, and I can see it coming right now. So I'm just gonna get ahead of it. It's an asinine argument, okay? What it's essentially saying is, no one looked into my particular brand, brand of sea salt. No one looked to see if there were microplastics in it. Therefore, there are no microplastics in it. No one looked, therefore it's not there. It's a dumb argument, don't use it. I will make fun of you in the comment section for using it. Uh, another one, and I saw this a lot saying, uh, you've got to use Redmond's. You've got to use Redmond's. Redmond's is a, is a sea salt that comes out of uh, Utah. And so it, it's probably chemically, it's probably identical to Himalayan sea salt. Same situation, right? Old ancient seabed uh, that dried up, left salt, and over millions of years, uh, uh, geological shit happened. And... Uh, it ended up underground, right? Uh, they mine it out, and uh, this Redmond's company, they make, uh, they have their own brand sea salt. It's it's just the American the American version of this stuff, basically. Um, and I didn't know where this was coming from. Like, why would you say this? But, you know, Redmond's Redmond's because I couldn't find it on Redmond's website. They kind of hint that their practices are. Uh, done in a way that I guess you can construe what they're saying as there's no microplastics, there's no um, contaminants in our salt. I guess you could kind of construe it that way. But then I found uh, there's someone called Dr. Barry has a blog. He's one of these doctor bloggers. Um, and he's I don't know anything about him other than he has made the claim that you need to use either Redmond's or Himalayan sea salt because it doesn't have microplastics in it. And um, that's all I know about him. So it sounds like he's full of shit to me. So 
I would take whatever that dude says with a grain. Grain of salt? <laughs> God, I'm so fucking amazing. Um, you know, uh, I, I can't prove that Redmond's doesn't have salt. I can't prove that it does have, I mean, salt. I can't prove that Redmond's has or doesn't have microplastics in it. But I can tell you this, uh, the use of polypropylene bulk bags is pretty much industry standard for moving this kind of stuff. So if they're moving, uh, if they're using polypropylene bags to move their salt from the mining facility to the consumer packaging facility, uh, there's a good chance it's getting contaminated. And if, and they are <laughs> packaging their stuff a lot of times in uh, plastic containers, there's a good chance that there's microplastics being in that. So, uh, Redmond's, yeah, no one looked at Redmond's. Well, and, and I say that, I say that, that no one looked at Redmond's. Okay, I say that. But uh, in this, uh, I believe it's the Science Direct article, or the Science Direct research, uh, I'll pull up the th shot here. They did, <laughs> actually uh, look at and found microplastics in rock salt from Utah. They did not give a brand name. It's just rock salt from Utah. Um, they did find some microplastics in that. I'm not saying it's Redmond's, but Redmond's is rock salt from Utah. And these researchers found, could be a completely different brand. I don't know. Not, not that well versed in the rock salt from Utah, but could be, maybe. Um, yeah, so that's that again, and just for legal purposes, I'm not saying Redmond's has, <laughs> don't come after me, Redmond's. I'm not saying that you do have microplastics in your shit, um, cause I can't prove that. But, uh, if there are independent researchers out there that aren't affiliated with Redmond's who want to look into it, uh, I'd be interested to know what, what, uh, what the uh, outcome is. So if you've got one of those F tier, F T I R spectro spectra whatever thingies that you use to look for microplastics go ahead look at it. see what you find um so we're i'm droning on this is a 20 minute video god damn uh i thought it was gonna be short but it's actually really long uh i'm gonna go ahead and close here uh that's all i have if this is uh your first time here please uh leave a like leave a subscribe go check out that sub stack it's got all the links you're looking for all the proof um all the good stuff and uh, consider subscribing to that too. So until next time guys, and hopefully we'll have a next time sooner than, uh, sooner than last time. Until next time, keep at it.